Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what's gonna happen with insurance in Florida. Not just Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Asheville, right. in general. What, what do you think? This, this hurricane was devastating. We, I did a video on the hurricane. You're doing a video on the hurricane mm -hmm. and the impact on real estate along the shore. But you think insurance is gonna come back over and over again on these ranches that are getting flooded? It's just, it's it's gonna be a crazy situation. I mean, right now it's fresh, everything's devastated. And I know I know people are gonna say, well, we had hurricanes before and they rebuilt, but right. this one is costing, they're estimating three to six billion. Well, you know, the, it, hurricanes of the past, when you start, they start making these comparisons, you know, cause I've seen the news media too. You know, the building costs weren't the same. The values of the homes were different, you know, because you're they're going back 20 plus years to some of these as they compare and they make their graphs. Right. And it makes total sense. But at the end of the day, everything's more expensive now. Materials are through the roof, um, you know, because of inflation and everything else. So that all adds to it. So replacement costs of homes has obviously gone up. Right. And but <clears throat> we were having an insurance crisis in Florida before this, even this hurricane. Yes. And people were losing deals on homes because of insurance. They're not realizing they, they were thinking of, they're coming from out of state and homeowners insurance uh, on out of state is an afterthought. Right, right. You didn't, you know, it's now it's a forethought while you're in your inspection period for sure so that you can get a good quote. Do me a favor, stay until the end. I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen. And I really do think what's going to happen. And, and do me a favor, subscribe. Uh, hit the bell notification and give it a thumbs up. It really motivates us and it's greatly appreciated. So it's gonna be, these people, do you think they're gonna get insurance again? I don't know how that works, to be honest with you. I would think that you would even, you know, because the insurance company's giving you the money. If you've got a mortgage, then you would still have to get insurance somehow. You, you know what I mean? So I don't know how that whole cycle works. Um, but I would speculate that if you did get insurance, it's just going to be astronomical, you know, but that's going to get, in my opinion, I'm sure they're going to spread the wealth to everybody. You know, everybody's insurance right. is going to start going up. Yeah. People don't understand that, that say you have State Farm or whoever, you know, and they, they have big payouts in the Carolinas. They're going to raise the premiums to people in Florida. Right. If there's a hurricane in Miami that gets affected, it affects us here in Tampa. It's not, oh, I didn't get devastated, so I shouldn't be hurt. Right, right, because it's a corporation, you know, that's the insurance company itself. So they're gonna, they're gonna spread that amongst everybody. And I'm sure, you know, people who did file claims, not that they, or, you know, not that they shouldn't have filed the claim, but obviously just like if you file a claim on your car insurance, your car insurance goes up a little bit too. Yeah, and not only that, but I am already seeing it that people are gonna start committing fraud on the insurance. They are. Yeah, I think Florida leads the state in fraud anyway, particularly with roofs and things like that. So they've passed some legislature to help curb that uh, side of things. But, you know. Look how much fraud was on the roof scams. It was right. just, it was just, e it was easier to sue the insurance company. Your roof is 20 something years old, but let me sue my insurance company because I want a new roof and I don't want to pay for it. And, oh, look, you know, the insurance company rather settle with me and pay it out. So now they're paying thousands of dollars to an attorney, thousands of dollars to an adjuster, and then giving you a cheap roof most of the time. And then, you know, you're like, oh, okay, I got away with it, but you didn't get away with it because your premiums are going up. Yep. And it's a pet peeve of mine. I know it's a pet peeve of mine. And um, it's just, it's just ridiculous because it causes everybody's insurance to go up. It does, unfortunately. So that, you know, thankfully, you know, they passed the uh, legislation a couple years ago that'll hopefully help out with some of that stuff. But now once we've had these these hurricanes and all this devastation, this massive devastation, um, I just don't, you know, it's just one more hit, basically. That's the way I feel. It's like one more hit to Florida, one more hit to it. So, you know, we started talking about what's what are our predictions, you know, the economy, what- Yeah, what is I- like. Now what's going to, my prediction, you know, I want to know what yours is. What do you think is going to happen to some of these homes that get condemned because they're just so much damage, obviously. You know, houses that get flooded all the time. What do you think is gonna to happen to that whole area? And we can't speak about Asheville because we don't know the market or the Carolinas, but let's talk about 
our coastline on the Gulf that got, you know, Cedar Key, Hudson, you know, well, Port everything. Ritchie, everything, you know, it's the down to Sarasota. It'll be ours talking about every little tiny city that gets hit. But I mean, all overall, the state what, of what, what do you think? At the end of the day, they're going to make people raise their houses. They don't have money. Is the government going to just say, here's who some knows? money to raise the house? Who knows? That doesn't even make sense, but who knows? Um, to take, just pick up the house, it doesn't work like that. Take a know? house from the 1970s, and that's on a slab, and kind of lift it up? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't see that Like happening. me and you were talking about, we're like, okay, what do they do? Cut off the roof, put a second floor? Put, right, basically. But that's still you need an engineer. And yeah. that's not structurally, those walls weren't made for holding Well, no, they center. would re-engineer the walls with, you know, different pillars. Because they've done that in the past. You've seen that done in the past when you're remodeling but, houses. But does it make sense at that point just to knock it down? Depending on the house. You know, it depends on the value of the house and what you're going to do with it and how much damage there was. Just like a car. Did it get totaled or did it not get totaled? You know, trying to equate it to something, you know, that's sometimes a little bit more easy to, uh, to wrap your mind around. All right, so let me ask you this question. I know you can't predict, and you're not an insurance agent, neither am I, but do you think a lot of insurance companies are going to go under or just going to get out of Florida and say, that's it, we're done? Well, they're going to do like they do every time, in my opinion, is they're just going to leave like they have the last couple of storms, you know, and then everything will filter back over to citizens, which is, you know, the state's um, insurance it's, of last resort. Which is basic, basic insurance. Right, yeah, it's, it's super basic. And then they'll start working on things to get insurance companies to come back into Florida just like they are. It's the same cycle over and over again. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way it works. So, you know, and then, but look, overall, there's just so much more to the storm than just insurance. I know everybody beats up on insurance, but let's think about everything else that goes along with this in general. That, you know, not only the houses, but what about the businesses? Personal belongings, cars. Right. But just think about it. Yeah. Business, just starting like from the core, businesses. Okay. Now, those businesses are shut down because they were destroyed. So the okay. people are laid off. So now the people whose houses may or may not have been affected in the store, they don't have a place to go live. They don't have a job now. Mm -hmm. Or the people that didn't live on the coast that were at certain businesses where their houses weren't affected, but now they don't have a job. All right. So they can't pay their bills. Right. So it's just this giant snowball that could potentially hurt things. Let's look at the tourist industry. You know, we're a huge tourist industry here in Florida, particularly on the coastline. Absolutely. Hotels that can and can't be open. Um, and then even if they are open, none of the restaurants are open around the area. So let's just take like Clearwater, Clearwater Beach area as an example. You know, most of the not the mom and pop shop hotels, but like some of the bigger hotels, the parking garages are underneath and they're up. So they maybe didn't get as much water. I know some of them got flooded into their um, lobbies, but what about all the other businesses around that aren't yeah. open right now? So, you know, it's just, it's a big snowball effect that sometimes people don't even think about. It, it, it can take months to get back on, back, yeah. get back on it and a lot of money. It'll take yeah. months for some of these businesses to survive. Right, You're and then right. the influx of need for construction materials and skilled labor to come in and do the work. And things that people don't even think about, like our navigation getting out, out on the water, it actually changed. Right. So that's affecting commerce, like the, the shrimp boats right by us. Right, yep. Okay, so now the channel, you know, is getting filled in by sediment from the storm. Mm -hmm. Like little, literally sandbars that have been around for years, like, you know. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah. You know, they're just, yeah. they're just gone. And so now the sediment, so now that's going to cost money because I'm sure you can't just go out there and start dredging. That probably has to be an Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah, or, there's a little more to it than that. Yeah. There's more to it. But that's affecting commerce. Absolutely. That's where we get our shrimp from, our fishing, our, right. you know, even the charter captains. Yeah, I mean, and that's it. Where That's why I'm saying, like, everybody needs to think about the whole global picture. You know, if you're a couple miles off the coast and away from any kind of a, a water body, you know, you, the good chance with this storm is that you weren't affected from the storm itself, you know, because this was mostly, you know, a tidal type water situation. But you could be affected because of your job. You could be affected right. at the store, you know, when you go to buy certain products, um, building materials, you know, scarcity on building materials. So then building materials could potentially go up. That's why, you know, with the with this storm, insurance is going to go up because insurance looks at all that stuff. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, labor is more expensive. Yep. You know, um, materials are more expensive. Mm -hmm. Car repairs are more expensive. 
you know, electric cars, if they get flooded, they're done. They're done. They'll probably catch fire. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there won't be much arguing with that if they're, you know, they burned up. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, and then the other side of the coin is when, you know, the, you start to see just from past storms that I've been involved with, you know, you start seeing a lot of workers come from other states because this is where the money's at now and they can make some money, which is great because we need that, you know? Um, because there's just not enough workers here local, but they'll come in and work. But you have to also remember that there's a lot of people out there that take advantage of situations like this as well. So oh, yeah. from us to every, all of our, our viewers, you know, you've got to just be careful who you're using for your services. Yeah, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a perfect example. Okay, so on, on my property, the motors for the lift got flooded. Uh-huh. Okay? Yep. So they, they burnt out. Um, I called around and obviously it wasn't just me, it was everybody else. So right. everybody's reaching out. I found, I called a few places, they called me up and usually they're like 295 bucks, 300 bucks. Right. No problem. But some people I call, they're like, oh, we want $900 each. I'm like, 900 bucks? I replaced these things before. Why is it 900 bucks? He goes, well, you want it? <laughs> you know, you're not gonna be able to get yeah. it. Everybody wants them. Obviously, you know, I found somebody that was good, reputable that I'll use in the future, a business I'll go to because they charge, they didn't gouge. Yeah, they weren't price gouging. And that's, you but know, that's, a, that's I'm, the only reason I'm even ex explaining that, you know, instead of paying, I paid 295 each, but the reason why I'm explaining that is now people are gouging for everything else. Right. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it takes, and that's just wrong, you know, that you kick somebody when they're down basically. But insurance companies are looking at that too because they're running into it. I'll give you another example, you know, I was watching, you know, on Facebook and stuff, you know, one guy to get his outlets replaced, you know, paid 3000 while another guy paid 1000 and had more outlets. <laughs> right. But the insurance companies have to take that into consideration. Yeah, I'm sure they do, you know, and that goes back to just making sure that the people you're using, like if, if you're getting somebody to do electrical work, make sure they're a licensed electrician, you know, and, well, and check, you know, make sure. But here's or the, a contractor. Here's the other thing too. You went to a house with me yesterday yep. and they self-insured. Yeah. Because the insurance company wanted thirty thousand dollars a year or something amount. stupid right. like yeah. that. And he got you know, he's estimating he got, you know, twenty, twenty five thousand in damage. So but over the years he saved enough money. Right, yeah, because it's not like every day his his house got damaged. I, every year rather. I think more and more people are going to self-insure because I think I think that homeowners insurance is going to be more expensive than taxes. What do you think? Well, homeowners insurance typically is more expensive than taxes right now. Well, some of the taxes it's crazy. Are, some of the taxes are pretty crazy. Like you know, um, some people that are moving into my neighborhood, they're paying eight to ten thousand dollars in property taxes, and I don't think they're paying eight to ten thousand in insurance. It just I, depends. It, I mean, I, think about the people who did have a claim whether it was fraud or not fraud. Yeah, along the shore, yeah. You know, it, just because you left the shore doesn't mean that that's not following you. Right, no, that, that's true. Actually, that's a really good point because somebody that, you know, I think, you know, put a claim on their roof, I think their claim was okay, it was legit, mm -hmm. but they put a claim anyways and they got the insurance to pay for it after they went, you know, it ended up costing the insurance company like 40 grand for a $15,000 roof, but, now they got their insurance bill and their insurance bill is like $8,000. It went from th yeah. three to eight. So within a couple of years, you it's, know, they covered the... Right, and, but that's not saying, you know, there's plenty of people who had to file claims for legitimate reasons. The majority oh, I, of people, I'm just I, saying. I agree with like, that. But and the, I think they do punish the people that they know this is probably a fraudulent type thing and they just it's cheaper to, to pay it than not fight it. And then I think you get penalized for it, I don't know. That's just my conspiracy theory. No, it, it, it's true, but the people that commit fraud are really hurting the people that aren't committing fraud. Right, yeah. You know, the, and insurance companies are saying, I, I pull article after article, they're saying, we have to because we keep getting sued. Right. And the lawyers, you know, are taking money. Of course. The adjusters are taking money. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a big scam. Yeah, it's tough. It's a it's a tough position to be in. So, you know, just off cuff shit chatting that we had like the other day. You know, it's at some point the insurance, in my opinion, just insurance is going to have to draw a line in the sand. Whether 
you, you know, if you're living on the coast or in one of these prone super, I'm not talking, you know, you see the, like we have a ton of little lakes out here where we're at right now filming. You know, I'm not talking that as like water. I'm talking, you know, coast, literal coastline. You know, there's going to be a point where insurance companies say, if your house is, you know, a, 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 just a traditional ranch and it's not raised up, we're not going to insure you like period, or you're going to do fire theft and liability. And that's all you're getting. You're not getting flood insurance, but we'll insure you for fire theft and liability. Yeah. But here's the problem. Okay. Like at my house, I can do what's a la carte. I could do fire theft and uh, uh, fire theft and liability mm -hmm. if I wanted to. But a lot of people, especially if you have a mortgage, you got a lot of insurance companies. I mean, a lot of loan lenders are going to want flood insurance. They want to protect of their assets. Yeah, of course. But, at some point, there's going to have to be a line in the sand, I would think, because it just can't keep going like this. Or, you know, the insurance is just going to be so if so astronomical. It's not going to be the 1,100 square foot ranch house any longer. You know, as these things, you know, continually get flooded, they're going to just end up going, hey, sorry, you know, take you rip the Band-Aid off, pay the people out. And if you want to rebuild, but, you know, the code is you have to go up now. So along the devastated parts of the Gulf that we have here, I think the investors are going to come in. Tell mm -hmm. me if you think I'm wrong. Okay. Investors are going to come in. They're going to offer pennies on the dollar. They don't care what the house looks like. They're nope. going to knock it down, build million dollar houses. And make a fortune. And they're going to make a fortune. And then at the end of the day, only rich people could live along the coast. And if it gets flooded again, the houses are 18 feet up in the air. They're on stilts. So who cares if the water goes underneath? Just right. don't leave any cars down there yeah. or anything to hit it. And then the water will recede and then life will continue to go on. And yes, they're going to be paying insurance, but they're not going to be paying as much as a ranch because they're 18 feet up in the air. And if water reaches 18 feet up in the air, then we have bigger issues anyways. Yeah. If the water's 18 feet up, there's a whole slew of issues that we don't even want to contemplate. But think about it, that's a million dollar plus house now. So that really does, that brings you, your, your uh, group, your purchasing group down pretty small. And if you're, you know, think about the taxes, insurance, all that stuff that goes on a million dollar property. And you, you need a lot of money to afford that. I mean, you know, we talk about just the median 400 and 50 some odd thousand dollar home, how much you have to make a year. You know, it's like 115, 116,000 a year annually to afford the median priced home right now. Now you double the price of the home or even triple the price of, you know, the median home. How much do you have to, you know, you're going to be in the three, four, five hundred thousand dollar a year range as a salary for, you know, uh, just for the to household. be able to afford a house. That's why I said, just afford day, the house. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be rich people. And you right. know, I, I met some people from the Northeast that came down and they bought houses. And you know they're paying eighteen thousand dollars for property taxes, and they're paying fifteen thousand to twenty thousand for homeowners insurance. They're like, yeah, what's the big deal? Yeah, and they don't think it's they don't blink an eye at it. They're no. just like, oh, okay. But I'm a believer that it, once <laughs> you know the regular person like me and Bill, once you're paying X amount of dollars with taxes, X amount of dollars with insurance, you don't really own the house. The county owns the house. You know, I'm a big believer in that. I think there's just there's a limit of how much you can pay. Yes, I do understand. We have to pay some property taxes, but if it gets too stupid, it's just like, you know, you, especially if you're trying to retire or something. Well, then, you know, you better have, if you're going to live, if you want to choose to live in a million dollar house on that same kind of topic, if you want to live in a million dollar house and retire, then you better make sure you have enough money and know that no, you're going to No, I'm talking about that. people like me and you. Yeah. Well, just in general, if you're going to retire, you need to plan ahead. Yes. And not just like two years before you decide to retire. I'm talking like you should be planning 15, 20 years before you retire. So at the at the end of the day, Bill, what do you think? The end. Of, I'm going to tell you because I told everybody I was going to tell everybody what I think at the end of the day what's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen with insurance? Well, I mean, insurance is just going to go up. Period. Okay. I mean, there's really, I mean, it's not like that's a big secret. Um, and I think what's going to happen is, with the market in general particularly along the coast, you know, there's going to be a handful of people who sell to the investors and they come in and they start, you know, and there's pros and cons to that too. You know, the investors come in and they, they, they're starting to bring the value of the property up. So therefore it increases your property's value. Um, you know, and then now you're getting, if you're insured and they're going to renovate the house, you're getting your house renovated. So, you know, now you have a little bit more, you know, you got it. You've, you've, you've had the property renovated. So now the property's worth more money. 
So, you know, a silver lining per se, but then there's going to be the people who self-insured and they can't afford to do that. You know, so it's, it's when just they renovated the house, if it's still a rain it's sitting on the, it's going to get flooded again. I don't care what anybody says. Well, at some point in time. At, yeah. at, okay. At one point. Okay. Here's yeah. my, here's my theory. I think that there's going to be just a, a general state flood insurance or, a, a, I mean, a homeowner's insurance, like citizens. I think citizens are going to have to expand. And I think the risk is going to be put on all the taxpayers. And everybody's going to be able to, everybody's going to have to flock there because that's going to be the most reasonable price and get basic homeowner's insurance. That, that's an interesting concept because then you have to, I'm thinking of the mortgages and they're going to have to cover the mortgages. So it still can't be a flat fee. You know, there's a lot to that. That's an interesting but thought. I think, but I mean, I think, look but at like citizens now. They, it doesn't matter. If you're in citizens, you pay for flood insurance, period. Yeah. I mean, they start, it's not like all one foul swoop, but it's, it's rolling yeah, it that, out. That's what they're, you know, the, so it's kind of going down that road. Yeah. Anyways, that's today's video. Tell us what you guys think. What do you think is going to end up happening for insurance? Not just in Florida, it's, you know, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, where you are. It's just, it's, it's crazy. There has to be an ending point. Yeah. So do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. It's greatly appreciated. And we'll talk to you in the next one. See you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.